Hello everyone, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. I am going to just keep cracking on with some ECGs that I started yesterday. Um, I want to do this whole textbook basically live so that one day when someone's doing this textbook they can um, see someone else do it. Don't know if I, I should be held as a gold standard on how to do ECGs. I'm not, there, I'm not very good. But uh, it should be helpful for those who are interested in ECGs um, to see someone do it, whether they do it correctly or incorrectly. Um, I make many mistakes and that's okay because I'm an intern, I'm learning. So um, I'll, uh, I'll just keep doing these ECGs and uh, hopefully finish the textbook. So uh, I, I doubt many people will be interested, but uh, if you're not interested, uh, please feel free to just stop by and say hi. Ross, how are you, Art Vandalay? I always wanted to ask you, by the way, like, what's your favorite Seinfeld episode? Um, Ross, I, I think Superman is probably, I, I think, I don't know what the name of the episode is, but you know the episode I'm talking about, the, the No Soup For You episode. That was very funny. Or the marine biologist one with Costanza hitting the golf ball into, uh, I won't even ruin it, but when Costanza becomes a, a marine biologist, that was iconic. That was so funny. Uh, Marino, thank you so much for stopping by. Seafrost, hey, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. MKZ, what's happening? Good. Hello, hello. Um, I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to stop by. Last stream, I didn't actually get um, that many ECGs done. We only did um, 11. Uh, and it took like an hour and a half. So this stream, I'm going to try and... Uh... Oh, Naomi, English Rose. Cool, nice to put a name to the... English Rose, because I didn't know what your actual name was. Sorry, Naomi. But nice to, I guess, more formally meet you now. Um, Puerto Rico Day. Oh, is that the episode where they get caught in the... Um, yeah, the guy, there's a car that, like, he cuts off a car, and the car cuts him off, and then they get caught in a big parade, and it's just about that awkward tension. Oh, I had some of that this morning. I've been, I just spent a bunch of hours in the, uh, in the COVID testing line because in Australia, the lines are so long. We're starting to be in that um, kind of exponential growth phase of the Omicron growth. So I've just spent ages in the, uh, in a COVID line. And uh, yeah, there was a couple of people who tried to cut in and it was, oh, it's pretty complicated how to handle it. Like, what do you do if an old person who's obviously more frail and vulnerable than you pushes in front of you? Like on one hand, they shouldn't do that. On the other hand, they probably uh, are less resilient to the direct sun and are getting dehydrated and stuff. So um, I don't know. I just kind of let it pass because I'm a bit of a pushover. Um, just fixing up my green screening sensitivities. Give me one sec. Is that a little bit less? It's hard to get this right. I'm not a green screen expert. I don't even know what any of these things mean. All right, well, that's the best I can do. Um, yeah, ECGs aren't something... So Ross is saying, ECGs aren't something I'd n ever need to learn or study or do as a student um, in your in your course, but anything medical does interest me a lot after starting my uni course. Cool, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to handle it, Naomi. Oh, you're welcome. For that thing you never asked permission for? Ah, oh, well. I never understood the triangular ECG starting CVP are 20 days from today. I don't understand that, MKZ. Um, but anyway, crew, thanks for coming by. I'm going to uh, kind of interact with the chat between ECGs and just try and do one ECG at a time. Do the ECG, look at the answer, interact with the chat if chat's happening. Um, and that's kind of my plan for the next hour. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful that you guys, you guys have really been like hanging out a lot with me in the last um, couple of days of isolation, which I really appreciate. And, um, and uh, <laughs> that's right, the British passive aggressive way. Um, yeah, MKZ, we put them on the limbs so that you can get the leads and uh, and that kind of thing. I don't know what the question is, but uh, yeah, no, the lead, the limbs leads are very important. All right, let's get cracking. So that is my Discord and my announcement, and that 
is my ECGs. All right, cool. Setting up. We finished on a STEMI last time, thank gosh, because we did 11 ECGs and there was no STEMI. Um, let's begin. Okay, we got an 86-year-old woman complaining of generalized weakness. Um, so let's just, obviously it's abnormal. We've got missing beats. Uh, let's go black actually and get the rubber out. Um, what do we got? We got P waves, we got QRSs, we've got some skipped beats. Um, let's get a bit of a rate and a rhythm. So where are, where are our P waves? So it looks like there's a P wave before every QRS complex. Okay, this is a like obviously uh, to me I'm seeing that this is going to be a heart block because I'll explain that in a second. But we've got P waves before every QRS complex. I'm going to call this sinus rhythm. Um, what's the rate? So since it's irregular, obviously irregular, and it's irregularly irregular, like three beats, so it's kind of like skip beat, three beat, skipped beat, four beats, skipped beat. So I'm just going to call it irregular, probably irregularly irregular. And, um, hmm. The rate will be the number of beats on the strip, which is a 10 second strip. So you times it by six to get the number of beats in 60 seconds. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight times six is, you know, 40s. So it's, it's not perfect, but we're thinking kind of 40s uh, to 40s to 60s is what I'm going to say. So it's um, probably important actually to get that right. So in this case, I'd probably count for a full minute to get an exact number because it could be bradycardia but it's, um, I'm going to say it's around uh, 50. And uh, I think now we're going to get to the meat of this ECG, which is the intervals. So first we've done rate, rhythm, now we have to do axis, the z-axis. So this is positive in lead one, this is negative in the foot lead, which means that if it's negative in the foot lead and it's positive on the um, first lead, that the, the axis is probably on the left-hand side. And since this is negative, downwards it's going to be a left axis deviation so we've got a wide QRS with a left axis deviation so we've got a bundle branch block um, I think and it looks like an M so we've got a marrow which is a right bundle branch block uh, M marrow if you guys don't know what marrow is um, look up William marrow it's just a useful tool to diagnose bundle branch blocks. So you got a right uh, so we got a right bundle branch block with left axis deviation. And now we and so that's the QRS, but now we also have to look at the other intervals. And here there's some very interesting stuff happening with the PR interval. Okay, so this PR interval is that the smallest it goes? Okay, that's the smallest it goes. Okay, this PR interval is one and a half squares. This PR interval is almost two squares. This PR interval is almost three squares. And then this P doesn't actually conduct a QRS, missing QRS. So that's the wanker back, right? It's a uh, PI that's getting longer and longer and longer, and then a dropped beat. PR um, prolonged. And so I think it's a wanker back. I, can't, I think that's Mobitz type 1, because it's getting longer, longer, longer drop. Mobitz 1. But I can't remember if it's 1 or 2, so we'll have to check that. So then we look at T waves. They all look a little bit random, don't they? That might no. You know what it is? It's the P wave that's inside the T wave. That's why it looks weird. Um, okay, so that's the T waves are all okay. Now we want to look for some ST stuff. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, I think we found the money. We got generalized weakness because of a um, second degree heart block. Um, with a right bundle branch and a Wankerbeck Mobat Mobitz type 2. Let's see the answer. Sinus rhythm with second degree heart block type 1, Mobitz 1, Wankerbeck. 
Good job. Right was 50, and there was left ventricular hypertrophy with a right bundle branch block. Good job, guys. Now, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, I do not really know how to diagnose that very well. So, um, Mobitz 1 is characterized by regular P waves with progressive prolongation of the PR interval until a P wave fails to conduct the ventricle. You see, I didn't know that. So actually the P waves are always regular. It's the QRS that's getting delayed. And that kind of makes sense to me, actually. Yeah. If I um, maybe use a highlighter. Oh, that's too wide. Let's uh, use this. Is this, uh, that's a P wave, that's a P wave, that's a P wave. Okay, it's pretty much regular. It's, it doesn't look perfect. Yeah, that does kind of look regular. And then this one, just, it's regular, but doesn't, and then that one's regular. Okay, no, I fully back this. All right, that's good learning for me. See, we're learning together. So, um, P waves are regular. The QRS is what gets delayed. So, if I'm highlighting the QRSs, they get longer and longer until they are empty. Longer, 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 disappeared. Okay. Oh, man. That is useful. Usually there is also progressive shortening of the uh, R interval until the P wave is non-conducted. Oh, okay. Uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, LVH. This is something I suck at diagnosing. Okay. It's diagnosed on this ECG because the R wave amplitude in the left limb, the AVL, is bigger than 11 mils. Okay, that makes sense. So the left axis was actually because of the left ventricle hypertrophy, so it's big hard on the left, so that's where a lot of the axis and the conduction goes. And on the left limb lead, AVL, it's huge. So that amplitude is enough to diagnose LVH. Cool, lesson learned. Ah, oh, what's happening, Mark? Welcome. So that's, uh, that's good progress, guys. We're 15 minutes in. We've done our first uh, ECG. Hey, Saito, thanks for joining. Thank you so much for your help on uh, Discord as well. I really appreciate you um, helping me out with the reaction videos. Um, yes, AV Block. And yes, good stuff for MKZ. Um, does the atmosphere need to be heavy in order for the frequencies to bend? Ricky... Um, I'm not sure. Oh, Ross, did you just become a medical resident? That's awesome. Welcome to med medical resident. Thanks so much. I don't know how to... <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, uh, Ross. I really appreciate your support. Uh, whilst this channel is young and growing, it's nice to have you guys um, as part of like the core kind of group. Really appreciate it. Um, oh, right. Nice. I'm glad that it's kind of making sense. Look, what you're looking at, guys, is essentially the conduction of electricity through the heart in different directions. So the heart is the muscle that has different electrical circuits going through it. Should really only have one circuit, to be honest, from top right to bottom left, roughly speaking. And uh, when that is abnormal, you can pick up um, abnormalities in the electrical tracings, which is what this ECG, what's, what ECGs are. Um, thanks, Naomi. Yeah, I really appreciate all you guys uh, considering to support the channel. It's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, I've been, um, yeah, I've been really appreciating all the support. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it's an involuntary smooth, uh, cardiac muscle is its own type of muscle cell, actually. There's smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle. It's the different types of muscle. Smooth muscle is on your digestive tract. Uh, skeletal muscle is your big biceps and stuff you can control. And then, um, then uh, uh, the cardiac muscle is its own muscle because of the, the way that it attaches to neighboring muscle cells. It makes it unique because that's how it, it has all these connections to let ions flow through the cell membrane so that it conducts the electrical uh, charge through the heart and causes the uh, contraction. Um, cool. Well, I think with all that in mind, we just keep rocking to our next, uh, our next awesome ECG. <laughs> all right, ECG number 13. We've got to get to 21 in this one. All right. 
and we've got to do it in an hour. Damn it, we're 20 minutes in. I'm so slow. Um, sip of water. Get ready for it. Whoa. Okay, I didn't actually have a proper look. Now I'm having a proper look. This is very concerning. I'm calling for an attending straight away. I'm not even like trying. When I see an ECG like this, it's like... <laughs> I need help, and I need help right now. This person is very, very sick. You know, everything kind of falls apart with these um, tacky arrhythmias. This is an ECG of someone who's very unwell. So they're having palpitations, lightheadedness, 61-year-old man, and um, I'm worried a lot about this person. You can, you guys, even if you're, you don't know ECG as well, you can kind of just have a look at this morphology. Um like you can just have a look at any of these right any if you're looking at any of these the kind of you know blips as you want to call them um and then you just look at this it's like whoa okay so rate rhythm i mean first of all you just look at this you need to know i'm pretty sure this is vt ventricular tachycardia why do i say that because it's quick and it's wide so what's a qrs here it's probably that these are probably qrs's and these are the T waves with probably embedded P waves somewhere, I'm not sure. Um, actually, you might not get P waves in the ventricular tachycardia because it's just the ventricles fib like just contracting ineffectively. And that's why they're getting lightheadedness because the muscle is, the heart muscle is contracting so quickly that actually the um, blood outflow is ineffective. And so you get lightheadedness because you don't have enough. Um, by going to your head. So there's really not much more to say to this at, 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 at this point. You need to reverse this and usually you put pads on and you shock them three times. You might have to give them adrenaline um, and sometimes other medicine as well. Query amiodarone. I need to ask about that. Um, all right, let's just have a look at the answers because, I mean, let's, let's at least get a rate. So what do we reckon? It's uh, 150, yeah, it's about 150 uh, beats per minute ventricular tachycardia wide qrs we've got a oh we've got a kind of left axis deviation let's see what uh this tells us good good if i got that wrong i'd be in trouble okay ventricular tachycardia so we've got a wide complex regular tachycardia the the, the differentials are sinus with aberrant conduction, supraventricular tachycardia. Um, so they're just talking about all the different things it could have been, which is actually very important. I should have probably talked a bit more about them. Um, but I didn't think it was a sinus one because there was no P waves that I could see. Um, it could be an SVT with aberrant conduction. So essentially, it's either sinus tachycardia with aberrant conduction or an S or a, you know supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction or it's just bloody ventricular tachycardia the scariest of tachycardias um, st is ruled out based on the absence of regular association between atrial and ventricular um, complexes yes so not sinus tachycardia the distinction between um, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction versus ventricular tachycardia is difficult so, so I mean in this case just assume it's the worst case scenario and work your way backwards in this case the presence of AV dissociation P waves are intermittently seen especially in V1 and 2 I didn't see any so in V oh, okay here's one oh it's so intermittent though there's only one was it lead 2 or V2 no, it was V1 and lead 2. I found one on V1. So lead 2, maybe that's one. Maybe that's one. Yeah, that is one. Maybe that's one. There's one. Yeah, so anyway, the P waves are totally random. Oh my gosh, it just gives me palpitations thinking about seeing a patient with this. Um, anyway... Uh, so, in general, wide complex regular tachydysrhythmias that do, that do not show any regular sinus activity should just be treated as VT. Okay, good. That's what I said. Uh, inappropriate treatment of VT as an SVT could cause big problems. Whew. Don't mess with ventricular tachycardia, folks. Especially if it's sustained, my gosh. Alright, ECG number 14. Hey, Colonel B. <laughs> Thanks for the 
response. Um, MKZ, the reason that is not uh, atrial fibrillation is because it's regular and there's no... Um, oh, I, I see why you would think that. It's because the QRS is wide. Okay, if it was atrial fibrillation, you'd have a narrow QRS. You'd have the you'd you have it irregular. I'm sure we'll have an atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response in these ECGs. So let's um, let's let's see what comes up. Ghostly lurker, woof, nice. I love that you guys get along so well and like it's it's nice to kind of create this little um, community of people who will like chat to each other and like each other and get along really well. It's super nice. Um, oh, Ghostly Lurker. Hello. Hello. All right. Let's keep hustling, guys. These ECGs won't read themselves. <clears throat> How's my volume, by the way? Oh, it's pretty loud. Whoops. I'm getting the red zone on my thing. I hope I'm not crackling. Hey, if you guys... Actually, let me let me see my audio effects. While I have you guys here, do you guys want to give me some advice? Okay, this is my voice without um, an audio effect called Big Bottom, which gives you a really big, bassy voice. This is now my audio... This is my voice with Big Bottom on. Do you guys reckon it sounds better? Oof, to Ross, 2 a.m., time to go to bed. Good night, mate, and sleep well. Um, wishing you an absolutely lovely sleep full of very pleasant dreams and I'll uh, see you tomorrow um, Okay, good. And what do you guys reckon about this effect I've put on it's called big bottom. Does my voice sound deeper? I'm actually speaking deeper, which is not no difference. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just take it off Okay, <laughs> it doesn't change anything. It's a bloody thing Paid good money for this not even anything <laughs> No one can tell the difference at all. All right <laughs> All right, well, then we will leave Big Bottom out of it. I've got a big enough bottom. Don't need no more. Let's keep hustling. ECG number 14. We've got a 44-year-old female intermittent episodes of palpitations. Okay. 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 All right, rate rhythm. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep the structure. Don't lose the structure, Sil. Oh, guys, you know what? I'm kind of thinking I should do this standing. Right, I'm going to do this ECG, then I'm going to do it, then I'll, and then I'll make my desk standing. Um, we've got sinus rhythm, obviously. You guys can see all the P waves, so let's just call it sinus rhythm. There's a P wave before every QRS. It's looking good. We've got a... Um... Oh. Interesting. We've got a rate of three and a half boxes. 300 divided by three and a half. Yeah, it's like 75, whatever, around there. We've got uh, T waves that look okay. Yep. Okay, so axis, uh, positive, negative, which means leftward. We've got PR interval. I think the PR, this is a very strange... Um, Morphology, isn't it? It's like a there's like two little blips on the. Uh, see what I mean? Like blip one, blip two. So there's an abnormal atria uh, P wave, abnormal P wave, abnormal P wave. And I think I know why because I've seen this ECG back in the day when I did this. I think I'd, I've done the first twenty ECGs of this textbook back like a while ago. Um, and this is a, yeah, this, this little kink is the, you see that little kink there? That's the hint in this ECG. Much more obvious here. Um, okay, so the QRS is, uh, slightly widened actually. Oh, it's borderline. And the reason for that is because of this extra wave. I forgot what it's called. I think it's, it's not a Q wave. It's like a J wave, or no, no, that's the J point. Oh, I can't remember the name of this wave. It's a special wave that suggests Wolf Parkinson's White syndrome, which is essentially when you have a, a you have a um, uh, an electrical conduction issue in the atria that uh, it's causing like a extra circuit to get to the ventricles, and can cause um, arrhythmias in the ventricles because of this accessory pathway. 
And that would make sense as to why the P wave looks abnormal to my eyes, because you've got the normal sinus node and then this area of um, Wolf Parkinson's white accessory pathway electricity thing going through. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's uh, pretty good. Um, I don't see any ST stuff that's obvious. I don't see any other weird things. T waves are all behaving nicely. So, um, let's see the answer. I think it's Wolf Parkinson's white. Um, and it is. Good job. I have done this before though, so it's not that good a job. Yeah, so there's a short PR, which makes sense, right? Like that's really, like what? that's very short as a PR. Ugh. Like if that's the PR, that's super short. Uh, Wolf Parkinson's white, three things. Short PR, long QRS, and then the slowed up, the delta wave. Delta, delta, delta. I got to remember that. I'm going to write it in big, bold writing. The, oh, that's too bold. This is called a delta wave. Delta, delta, delta. Delta Goodrum wave. Delta Goodrum, wolf Parkinson's white. Delta Goodrum being eaten by a wolf. That's how I'm going to remember it. Let's draw it out. You gotta, you gotta get graphic with your memory cues. What's a good song that Delta Goodrum is um, known for? I'm not very, not very good at drawing. This is Delta Goodrum. <laughs> I'm going to stop drawing now. I feel like this is pretty silly. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Delta Goodrum. Good stuff. Let's go to the next uh, ECG. Wow, that's a very bloody... Oh, I can diagnose that off the top. All right, let's have a run-through chat. How's everyone going? Um, Naomi, 2 a.m. All right, well... You go to sleep sometime. What do you guys do to fall asleep? Like, what are your pre-bedtime routines? Yeah, zilly, click. No way. Drawing in the margins. That's where life happens. Life happens in the margins. It's at the intersection. All right, next ECG. Let's hustle. So, right off the bat, A flutter. Why the hell do I say that? I probably shouldn't say that so quickly because I should be systematic because I'm an intern and I make mistakes all the time. But let's just see. So is this sinus rhythm? Yes, there's P waves before every um, QRS complex. Yep, so sinus rhythm. But it's not technically sinus because there's probably, though I can't see it, if, I, if it is a flutter, I'm pretty sure that's not sinus because there's going to be extra P waves that you just can't see because they're buried in like the T wave or something. Um, but anyway, I'll do one of these things. Query sinus rhythm. The rate is 150, you see, every two boxes. 150. And 150 is a rate that is commonly associated with um, atrial flutter. It looks like it has that sawtooth appearance where you have sharp, blunt, blunt, sharp, blunt, blunt, sharp. That's a kind of classic feature of, um, what do you call it, uh, atrial flutter. Uh, it looks pretty regular, doesn't it? Regular. Uh, normal axis. So positive here, positive here, normal axis. So yeah, atrial flutter. So 24-year-old pregnant woman with three days of frequent vomiting, okay? Hyperemesis gravidarum, give them a couple liters of fluid and repeat the ECG. Um, and if it could just be because of dehydration, I guess, I'm trying to reverse the underlying cause. Oh,
Man, did I just get that super, super wrong? I did. This is just sinus tachycardia. She's just dehydrated. I thought it was atrial flutter because... Oh, I feel so stupid. I was like, even saying it out loud, because I, I, I just... The, the pattern, the sawtooth pattern, I thought it had the pattern, and it was 150, so I was telling myself it's got to be atrial flutter because it's 150. But this is just sinus. It's just a P wave, a QRS, a T wave, a P wave, a QRS, a T wave. I was overcomplicating it. I was seeing what I wanted to see and not what was actually in front of me. That is so disappointing. And a very good lesson because this is actually a human bias. People see what they want to see. And I wanted it to be atrial flutter. Okay, well, good lesson learned. So the reason, obviously, that it's not atrial flutter is that it's sinus. When the ECG shows a narrow complex regular tachycardia, the differential includes sinus tachycardia, SVT, oh, and atrial flutter. Distinguishing is based on the atrial activity. In this case, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the P waves and the QRS, so it's sinus tachycardia. Okay, so if there was extra P waves, then that's when it would be a um, atrial flutter, okay? There was no extra P waves. I was literally saying the, the extra P waves were probably just buried in the, oops, sorry. Um, let me just reopen that. I was just saying that the um, P waves were buried, but they're not. This is a good lesson. I like actually being wrong publicly. Being wrong publicly, the embarrassment will help me remember this when I actually need to remember it when there's a patient. Um, thanks, Naomi. Yeah, no, I know I'm not stupid. It's just like, it's a silly, uh, silly thing. Chlorpromazine. That definitely puts you to sleep. Chlorpromazine, isn't that stemital? Does that help with sleep? I thought, no, yeah, prochlorperazine is stemital. You see, I always, so prochlorperazine is stemital and chlorpromazine is a totally different medicine. They don't make medicine naming easy, do they? Yeah, so chlorpromazine is an antipsychotic and prochlorperazine is a stemital, which is an anti-nausea medicine. Uh, I always get those two m mixed up. Um, anyway, Thama, yeah, if you're on any medicines like that, you also need to get your ECGs checked once a year or so. Um, I all... I, Thama says, are y'all doctors and stuff or are just entertained by Dr. Sill? Oh, you're talking to us chat. Oh, thanks, mum. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mum is joining us on a live stream. That's Chantal Meslin. All right, well, hey, maman, on va faire un petit ECG ensemble. Let's go. We've got someone with pleuritic chest pain, mum. 37-year-old. I dedicate this stream to you, mum, who... Uh, very kindly bought me this microphone for Christmas. Thank you, Mum. <laughs> All right, 37-year-old man with pleuritic chest pain. Let's keep it uh, organized. Um, I, I can see a couple things already. So first of all, you want to start off with rate. So, I mean, that looks slightly slow. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so, uh, you know, it's approximately 50. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're, we're looking at about a sinus rhythm of around 50. So, a little slow. Uh, P waves before every QRS. T waves all up facing. We've obviously got some ST stuff happening. We'll get to that in a second. Everyone relax. We've got positive, positive in one and AVF. So, that means it's going to be normal axis. And now let's have a look at the exciting stuff, which is obviously this STs um, in V2 to V4. And that's basically it. So before you, you get worried and you call this an ST elevated myocardial infarction heart attack, you have to look for reciprocal changes. So let's have a look. Where are our, our reciprocal changes? There are no reciprocal changes, but there's PR depression, isn't there? So that's a little bit of PR depression, a little bit of PR depression there. Um, 
So this PR depression plus global ST elevation is pericarditis. And it matches the history. Young guy with pleuritic chest pain. Am I sure? No. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. So you gotta I'm just saying I'm just saying that before I'm wrong publicly again. And uh, sinus pericardia, acute pericarditis. Okay, well I was right about that one, so that's good. Whew, redemption. Sinus bradycardia, rate 50. Oh, left ventricular hypertrophy. This is the thing I suck at diagnosing. So I think it's to do with these QRS. Oh, yeah, but that's really small on the AVL there. That's weird. Okay, LVH is diagnosed in this case because the R wave amplitude of in V5 plus the S wave amplitude in V1 is more than 35 mils. Okay, so V1, S wave is big and V5, S wave is big. So you call that left ventricular hypertrophy. Sure. i got to look into that. Diffuse ST elevation is also present. There's no reciprocal ST changes. We're on point here. And the presence of subtle PR depression. We're on point here. And several leads favors the diagnosis of acute pericarditis rather than acute myocardial infarction or the benign early repolarization, which is a differential I always forget to consider. Do not forget this. Still, if you can hear a dog barking in the background, it's because my puppy Albie is having night or it's having dreams. I think they're happy dreams because he's like running with his feet. He's really, really cute. Anyway, this patient um, was notable for an audible friction rub. That's not true. All right, there you go. Bonjour tout le monde. <laughs> I love how everyone's saying hi to you, <laughs> Mama Meslin. <laughs> there you go, Mum. All that money. Uh, you you paid in getting me raised. It's going into ECG uh, interpretation. What do you reckon? A couple more? Before I blush and get too embarrassed? Oh, what's this? Because this now looks like atrial flutter. But I'm going to be really uncertain. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's atrial flutter. Um, not yet. Okay, we've got 63-year-old, palpitations, lightheadedness. P wave. Hmm. I'm trying to work out if there's extra P waves here. Like the T. Hmm, it's hard. When things are too quick, like they they ha like this is obviously around 150 as well, 150 beats per minute. This kind of looks like there could be a P wave there and a P wave there. That also could be a T wave. It's hard to know. Um, I'm gonna call this a two to one atrial flutter because this could be a P wave, then it doesn't conduct, then a P wave, then it does conduct, then a P wave, then it doesn't conduct, then a P wave, then it does conduct. Like that would be two to one, like every second one. Uh, it should really be called one to one, actually, because it's one on, one off. But I think it's out of every two, one conducts. Out of every two P waves, one conducts. That must be why it's called that way. Um, it's not that wide. So it's either, so I mean, look, the differentials, atrial flutter, sinus tachycardia, Superventricular tachycardia, which includes atrial flutter, AFib, or something with aberrant conduction, blah, blah, blah. And um, it's not AFib because it's regular. So sinus tachycardia or atrial flutter. I think it's atrial flutter. Let's have a look at the answers. I find it very funny that people who don't, who aren't particularly interested in ECGs, enjoy watching this level of ECG interpretation <laughs> just for the entertaining aspect. That's funny. Okay, atrial flutter, 2 to 1 AV conduction block. Cool. My redemption. Good. The ECG rhythm is a narrow, complex, regular tachycardia. So it's narrow, complex, and it's regular. That's what we were saying. So the differential is ST, SVT, or atrial flutter. Cool. That's what we said. Um, we've got flutter waves can be found in the inferior la leads at 300 a minute. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm circling here, every box. Boom, 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 boom. They said inferior leads. Yeah, you can see them a bit better there. So that's every... 
This is the most clear one, isn't it? So there's a T wave and a P wave and then a P wave. Oh yeah, yeah, it's not obvious though. You got the sawtooth pattern. Don't trust that pattern though. It's caused me more harm than good. And whenever the ventricular rate is 150, think atrial flutter. And be careful for flutter waves. And look, you know, just give this person metoprolol. Obviously talk to cardiology first. I'm just trying to remember the main treatment. Metoprolol, um, I don't know, maybe like IV. Just five milligrams approximately. I don't know. Talk to my seniors for the dosage. 2.5 milli... I think you do 2.5 milligram aliquots. You can also try... It's an SVT, so you can try maneuvers like carotid massage. You can try carotid massage. You can try um, syringe blowing. So you take a 10 mil syringe, you blow it out, and that increases intrathoracic pressure and might revert a SVT. I did it the other day for someone who had an atrial flutter and her heart rate came from 150 down to like 110 while she was blowing on the syringe. And then it went back up when she stopped blowing. So we had to give her metoprolol. Wow, EEGs next time, Mamor. Maybe, maybe. Um, thanks for stopping by, Mum. <laughs> cool, so I'm happy with that atrial flutter. Let's keep going for the next one. We're making good progress, guys. 45 minutes in and we are up to ECG. Uh, 18. That's awesome. That's good. I can take a break now. Um, Naomi's saying that it is interesting. Yeah, I love that you guys are keen to just kind of listen to me speaking out loud while doing some study because this is this is useful to me. I would be doing this off of stream if no one was keen, but um, I just thought I might as well stream it because I'm going to do it anyway. And I thought that maybe one day a medical student or an intern will uh, enjoy watching this. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, you zilly click. Yep. It's, it's interesting. Also, please don't take it the wrong way, but it's nice to sometimes just to have good background noise. You can oc occasionally pay attention to. Oh yeah. If you want to use my, um, streams as background noise, I mean, I don't mind at all. Like, uh, you can use it for whatever reasons you like. I've had people who are just chilling in the bathtub who enjoy the sound of my voice just have the stream on while they're in the bath. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> you guys live your life. Um, my mum's just texted me, guys. What did she say? Oh, she's just saying nice things. Um, uh, don't worry about it. Shall we keep cracking on? Oh, I should probably do a video net later. Maybe another scrubs or a... I want to do a house episode, but finding it hard to um, get the actually MP4s of the episodes or like to screen capture it. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. We've got a 33-year-old obese man with sharp pleuritic chest pain and dyspnea. Hmm. Sharp pleuritic chest pain and dyspnea. 33 and he's obese. Okay. Let's see if anything pops up. Nothing. I mean, oh yeah. I'd just like to have a look to see if anything obvious is happening. Yeah, there's a bit of a depression. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, uh, rate. Three and a half boxes. Approximately three and a half boxes. Let me change the color. Actually, let's go purple. It's a nicer color than black. My, it might be nicer on your eyes. Let's go a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, around uh, three and a half boxes. Okay, so 100. What's 300 divided by three and a half? I'm going to call it around 70. No, it's a bit quicker, isn't it? It's like... Um, Let's go 70 to 100. I'm just going to call it 85. That's what I'm going to do. PR looks normal. Oh, sorry. Let's just keep it. So rate, rhythm, it's sinus rhythm. The axis, a bit negative. 
positive, so mild right axis deviation. Okay, so this AVF is the lead that paint faces downwards. So if that is positive, then that suggests that electricity is going um, in the 180 degrees horizontally down. And then the number one lead is from uh, right to left on a patient's body. Obviously, if this doesn't make sense, you guys don't worry. But this is obviously a person. And if this is positive, then it means the electricity is going on this side of the patient's body. But it's negative, just barely. So the electricity is slightly going in a slight right axis deviation. Cool? With a, bit, with a lot of error. Could be anywhere in that direction. Um, let's look at some intervals. This is where it gets exciting on this ECG. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? 45 minutes of ECGs is what happens to you. Come on, we've got to get, what are we up to? 18, we've got to get to 21. There's 200 to go through. <laughs> I want to do them all, I want to live stream all 200 ECGs. So, it's only one way to do it, and that's just keep going. Although next stream I'm going to do standing. So we've got uh, ST depression, V2, mild v3 maybe v4 we've got what's happening with the t waves guys t wave t wave t waves all facing down they should be facing up so don't know why they're facing down i kind of always ignore the t wave on v1 because it doesn't matter which way it faces but we've got let's just write it down ST depression V2 to V4 T wave inversion V1 to V4 and we've got like this um, sinus T wave here the can you guys even see me on the uh, on the screen I'm just like hunched over <laughs> sorry <laughs> maybe I should bring this I'm going to bring my desk up even though that's going to affect my ugh, camera It'll be better for my back in the long run. Sorry if it's a bit wobbly for a second, guys. And bring that down touch. Cool. Now when I'm facing down into my notes, you guys can see me a little bit. So I don't really have a diagnosis here other than um, vague T wave inversions with some mild ST depression. Oh, I need to look if there's ST reciprocal ST elevation. Um, and there doesn't look to be any obvious ST elevation that I can see. Is the PR a little long? Mm, borderline, not really. No, that looks normal. Uh, between PR should be between... Oh, what is it? What is it? It's 12 to 20. Which is three box, three small boxes to five small boxes. And this is like four and a half small boxes. So, that looks normal to me. Sorry guys, I don't really have a nice di diagnosis except for this... Um, like, this is an abnormal kind of morphology, but it's not wide, so it's not a bundle branch block. It might be an incomplete bundle branch block, or right, like an incomplete right bundle branch block, because there is some axis deviation to the right. So I can write that down in com query, incomplete right bundle branch block. Um, and that's literally... <sighs> all I've got for this one. I hope I'm not missing something like I should definitely know. Because, you know, I'm a junior doctor. I'm allowed to make mistakes on this. Just before anyone judges me. Cool. So, as I said, it was T-wave abnormality, T-wave inversion, which is a, you know, it's a it's an abnormal finding. You should not have T-wave inversion. Um, the fact that he had pleuritic chest pain suggests that he has the uh, the... Uh, a pulmonary embolus. Yeah, let's read on. Okay, T wave abnormality. Let's put some highlighter. That's a rubber. Highlight. 
T-wave abnormality consi consi consistent with ischemia with a right axis. So we got this right, we got this right, we got the rate and the sinus good, um, and it's suggestive of a PE, which is what the patient had. The ECG demonstrates the classic S1 Q3 T3 finding, which is this thing that I heard is very rare actually, but actually I think it's like 20% of PEs have it. So it's a small, so it's a large S wave in lead one, a small Q wave in lead three, and in T wave inversion in lead three. S1 Q3 T3. So leads one and three. So let's have a look. Lead one. Do we have a large S wave? Yes, we do. Oops. Large S wave lead one. Now, do we have a small Q wave and an inverted T wave in lead three? I mean, that's not that small a Q wave, is it? We've got the inverted T waves, but these are the Q waves here, and they don't look that small to me. Let's have a look at some other ECGs to compare Q waves. That's not a good one. That's You see, that's a small Q wave. That's a big Q wave. That's a massive Q wave. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It's not the most sensitive thing you can use to diagnose a PE. The fact that he's short of breath with chest pleuritic chest pain is like, uh, and he's obese is like, all right, if you've got two kidneys, you're going to get a CTPA. Obviously, management. Um, just stabilize O2, analgesia. Um, and then CTPA, query thrombus, query PE. And then, obviously, you give them thrombolytics. And I think if they're unstable, you go for TPA. If they're stable, you go for a heparin infusion. <sighs> That's basically my understanding. All right, have a little break, read through this chat. What's happening, crew? Oh, we've got a postman pat in the chat. What's up? All of this I don't understand. I'm no way medical, just watching as it's interesting. I've learned the bits between what I believe beat, peaks and drop are P waves uh, and T waves. Nice, good stuff. Um, dyspnea equals lungs filling up, left ventricle contracting less. Mm. MKZ, dyspnea is defined as shortness of breath. Um, tachypnea is described as a sign. So dyspnea is a symptom, uh, tachypnea is a sign. But this, yeah, it's basically someone just saying that they feel short of breath. Um, getting some love, Postman Pat. My detective skills tell me you're a Brit too, Postman Pat. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Your skills are on the button. Nice. Oh, where are you guys from in England? Oh, and is it nice and cold? Because right now it is boiling in Sydney. Boiling. I'm hot. I might actually go get myself a cold drink. What is that? Procrastination, I hear? No, let's keep going. In fact, I reckon I should stand up, but I've never done the green screen standing up, so I'll do that for the next stream if it works. I gotta, I'll try it out before I just do it midstream. Um, I do enjoy doing this these study streams. Oh, it's actually a lot of fun. Study streams, that's catchy. Sills... Dr. Sills study streams. It's an alliteration. Definitely keep that going. London, nice. <laughs> Postman Pat with his black and white cat. Guys, we can't laugh because we've got an ECG in front of us. Okay, MKZ, this is your ECG, mate. MKZ, this is you. This is your time to shine. I want you to do this ECG, buddy. Sorry, I'm assuming you're male. Um, whether you're male or female, MKZ, please do this ECG for us because this is something we have talked about. First of all, so first of all, if you're MKZ, mute mute the stream because I'm going to keep going and then come back in the chat with your diagnosis. Wow, Thema, it's your favorite place you've ever been to. That's a massive statement. It is pretty good. Simon Almbro, welcome. I'm so glad you could uh, tune in for the live stream. 
And uh, it's awesome to have someone from Sweden listening to the to the live stream. I'm sorry it's so cold where you are, but that's kind of nice. What uh, What's your favorite brand of jacket, like warm down jacket that you use in Sweden? I've got a Mac Pack, which is a good New Zealand uh, brand for warm jackets. But I bet in Sweden, you know your warm jackets really well. It's probably a survival thing down there. Let's do this ECG. Come on, Cell. 81-year-old, female, palpitations, generalized weakness. I wonder why. Look, she's unwell. Um, this isn't a healthy ECG. Uh, let's do it. First of all, I, although it's hard to tell if things are regular with this medium, I can tell right now this is irregular. Um, these notches are not even. They're missing spots. Yeah, it's just, it's it's irregular. So to count this, you need to uh, actually count all of the QRSs and then times by six. One, two, I'll just count them in my head. One, no, I'll, I'll just, I won't draw on the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. So it's twenty-six times six. Um, so twenty times six is a hundred and twenty. Six times six is like thirties. So it's basically a hundred and fifties. Uh, approximately. Sorry, quick maths. I should probably memorize my six times table. Do not judge me. Um, P waves. What's happening with our P waves? Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between a P wave and a T wave, isn't it? That's what I struggle with. <sighs> That's a P wave. There's a P wave. That's a P wave. There's no P wave. That's a P wave. I think this is no P wave, or maybe the smallest. There's no P wave. These are T waves. There's a little P wave. No P wave. No P wave. That's a T wave. P wave there, but very subtle. No P wave. So what we have here is intermittent P waves, right? And what does that tell us? It means that this is not sinus rhythm because there is not a P wave with every QRS complex. So I'm going to go ahead and call this, um, so it's irregular, irregular, 150, um, non-sinus rhythm. So I just, I, I just know it's atrial fibrillation because it's irregular and it's not got P waves everywhere that are beautiful. So I'm going to call it atrial fibrillation and since it's rapid, we just call that with RVR, rapid ventricular response, or otherwise known as rapid AF. Usually this occurs because you're unwell for some other reason, like an infection, uh, some medicine you've taken, you're dehydrated, um, something's kind of tipped your heart into this fibrillatory state. So you've got to treat the cause. And, uh, and then you've got to also prevent clots because the big thing with atrial fibrillation is you've got these crappy little contractions in your little atrium and blood just pulls right on those little contractions because the contraction can't push the blood away. It just pulls there, forming clots. And so you have to make a risk assessment as to, well, if there's a clot that's going to be formed on your atria and then that goes into your bloody circulatory system, it's going to end up in your head and cause a stroke. So you've got to, you've got to think about anticoagulating these people. It's no small decision. You know, you don't want to be on anticoagulants if you don't need it. So yeah, there's there's Chad's VASC scores to use for that. Yeah. Spot on, team. Atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. Rate 155. When the ECG rhythm shows a narrow complex, irregular tachycardia, it includes the differential of atrial fibrillation, flutter, or variable AV conduction, and multi multifocal atrial tachycardia, MAT. Okay, MAT requires weird P waves, multiple. So distinguishing between these three entities is based off close evaluation of the atrial activity. Atrial flutter will be associated with a regular atrial activity. So that's the difference between atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. Atrial flutter is your P waves are contracting regularly, but way too quick for your ventricles. Those are called flutter waves. Multifocal atrial tachycardia is irregular foci for the electricity to go down. So you have different 
co looking complexes. So you need three morphologies of your P wave. And in fibrillation, there's just no association um, with any notable etrial complexes at all. So you might sometimes get a P wave, you might sometimes not get a P wave. There's no association, it's all messy. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool. Woo -wee. So this is an ECG that used to scare me a couple weeks ago, but I saw someone in, in the ED with it, with a very similar one. And, uh, and then I was reassured because I learned some important stuff. Oh, I can see the ECG much clearly on my screen. So look, um, we've got uh, ST stuff happening. We've got a ridiculously wide QRS with a very scary T looking wave. All of this is extremely scary, except for very specific things. You got to know to look for this blip and 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 this blip. These little blips are coming from a machine. This is a paced heart. So the reason you should be scared initially is because obviously it's, you got a wide QRS. Hang on, where's my pen? You got a wide QRS with ST elevation. That just looks terrible. Um, but uh, then you realize that it's a paced heart. Now, hearts that are contracted abnormally, so hearts that are depolarized abnormally will repolarize abnormally. Okay, that's the key le learning from this ECG. So this is a heart that is being depolarized abnormally because it's got a pacemaker um, sending the impulse. This pacemaker is sending the impulse to the atria and then to the ventricles. And then the ventricles are depolarizing and then they have to repolarize, which will look abnormal. And then as they repolarize, it goes back to baseline for the whole thing to start again. All right. So asymptomatic 61 year old man. That's consistent with this. He's just living his best life. This guy He's just chilling. Get out of hospital. Get out of here. Go have fun with your kids or your grandkids or your, or your garden. Oh, that's a smart thing. I didn't know. You, you, you should also document the percentage captured by because sometimes it might miss a beat. That's a good point. All right. Do I still have the next page blacked out? Yes. Come on. We're almost there, guys. Postman Pat, good night. 2.40. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bonsoir, dors bien. I gotta do my streams at an earlier hour, don't I? Because you guys are all going to bed. <laughs> it's awesome to see all the English love, by the way. I, I thought most of my um, viewers were like in the States and some in Europe, but uh, I didn't realize so many of you were from England, so that's awesome. England's got a big place in my heart. I worked there as a, as a bartender for a while. Uh, okay, next. Uh, okay, so this is what we're talking about. Atrial pacing occurs, indicating an initial... Oops. Spike, PS. This is followed by a small atrial complex, and then you've got the next spike. Um, yeah, so that, this is where they talk about it. Spike 1, spike 2. The rule of... a Oh, this is the rule of appropriate discordance. It's seen here, illustrating the normal relationship of the major terminal portion of the QRS complex and the initial ST segment T wave. Okay, I do not understand what discordance means in this case, in this like setting. I will have to look that up in my own time. A second PS, yeah, so they're just saying how you can see the two PS spikes indicating successful ventricular depolarization. The QRS complexes have a left bundle branch type morphology and ST segment T wave discordance. Okay, so they go in different directions, I guess. The most important finding is that each pair of um, paste spikes, I guess you could say that stands well, is followed by a capture indicating proper functioning of the electronic pacemaker. Fantastic. 
Okay, note the pacer spikes. Oh, that's what it's called, pacer spikes, PS. Initiating atrial and ventricular depolarization, the QRS complex is wide in the upper left image, lead one and AVI. A monophasic R wave is seen in this lead. The entire portion of the QRS complex is positive. In this instance, with an entirely positive QRS complex. This is appropriate discordance states that the STL segment, okay, this is what I need to listen to. The rule of appropriate discordance states that the ST segment is depressed below the baseline with an inverted T wave. In the other leads, the QRS complex is negative, which is accompanied by an elevated ST segment with an upright T wave. Okay, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit further, to be honest. An hour and ten minutes. Come on, guys, we've got to do one last ECG. ECG 21. 57, chest pain and palpitations. 57, female, mild chest pain, palpitations. So we're worried about an arrhythmia. Okay. We've got to, um, so these are the P waves, hey, with inverted T waves. That's probably a P wave too then. Yeah, these are the P waves. Okay, so we've, we've got sinus rhythm. There's definitely a P wave before every QRS. The rate is like hmm, around 100, just under 100, just over three, yeah, 100. Slightly tacky or borderline tacky, we can say. And this PR is long. This is longer than a box. Sorry. Here to here is longer than a box. So let's say uh, first degree heart block. No skipped beats. So first degree heart block. Weird morphology of the QRS, which is maybe borderline wide. So it, And it looks slightly right bundle with the M. Um, this is positive and this is positive. Okay. So that's weird. So normal axis. Normal axis and uh, query right bundle branch block incomplete not sure not sure not sure um we've got some like t way uh, st depression in a couple of areas st depression and t wave abnormalities Like these T waves are random. Guys, I don't know. Let's check it out. Not a great one to end on. Aha, it's a one of these junctional tachycardias. All right, so it's an atrioventricular junctional tachycardia. That means that it's um, like instead of the sinus node sending the electrical impulse, it's coming from the AV node. And usually that's slow, but in this case, it's going quicker. Um, and so it's called a junctional tachycardia. Um, and that's why we have a bundle branch block, I guess. So the rate's 110. So yeah, we were right. It was a bit of a tacky. P wave um, preceding QRS are absent. So they're not, they are not P waves. Those were the T waves. Oh, gosh, I find that hard. Like... Why couldn't it be an inverted T wave and then, you know what the trick here is? This is a tricky one, but the trick is to try and find some other P, other things that could be P waves. And I can't see any. I mean, here we might have something. Here we might have something. Now I know the answer. That's a P wave. Gosh, you got to get your microscopes out. Maybe that's a P wave. And then there's no P wave here. Okay, so we have not sinus rhythm. So this was incorrect. This is not sinus rhythm. This is uh, atrioventricular rhythm. We've got to learn. We've got to learn somehow. P waves can be found following the QRS complex, best seen in the precordial leads. So I think he's saying that well, they're saying that these are P waves buried in the T waves. 
this retrograde atrial activity is typical of a junctional rhythm. Oh, okay, so that's actually a way of telling you it's a junctional rhythm. And we've got a right bundle branch morphology noted. Um, the rhythm converted to sinus rhythm with right bundle. The rhythm converted to sinus rhythm with right bundle branch block after a single dose of adenosine. adenosine. Okay, so we've got a. Okay, you just so whenever you have a AV kind of issue, give some cheeky adenosine to revert. Oh gosh, I'm pooped. An hour of 13 minutes of uh, ECG. <laughs> Naomi, thanks for tuning, staying in for the whole time. I really appreciate that so much. I worked in Wimbledon at a beautiful pub called the Rose and Crown Hotel. Do you know it? You, you ever had a drink there? 400 years old that pub was. Oh. I'm gonna go um, go chill somewhere. Maybe uh, I'm gonna have a cold drink, and then I'm gonna maybe do a re video reaction. I'm thinking of playing the curious something of Edith Finch later. So if you guys are around, uh, oh, you've been there! No way, Naomi. That's hilarious. You know the uh, Rose and Crown Hotel. Beautiful, beautiful spot. That's amazing. Well. So have I. I have also drunk there. <laughs> if I'm ever in England, we should go grab a pint. Sido, is it? Cool. I saw that it was really highly rated, and I had fun playing that indie game yesterday, so I thought I'd play another one. I've only got a couple more days of isolation, though, guys. So, Naomi, what is special about the Rosen Crown Hotel in Wimbledon, like, in terms of its history? Obviously, it's right next to the Wimbledon tennis courts, so I guess that's where a lot of the people would go to um, play, like after a game of tennis, people you would go there to have a drink. Um, but yeah, it's just it was uh, very exciting when I was there. I left just before Wimbledon started, actually. All right, crew. Well, I wish you all an absolutely beautiful rest of the day. Get some sleep if it's late, everyone. And uh, I'm going to um, go get some food and some cold water and go chill. Uh, but thank you for joining me for these ECGs. That was fun. And I will be doing many more. So don't feel like you missed out on anything if you missed the stream. Because I'm going to do the... I'm going to do all of them. I'm 21 out of 200. And probably 400 because there's a second book. That I haven't started yet. Cool. Bizu bizu. Thank you for everything. Wishing you all a beautiful day. And uh, I'll see you all in the next stream. Bye for now.